In this video, I'm going to be solving these three equations that we see here on the page. And I'm going to use the properties of equality. Now, when we learned about the word of operations, we know that that was the, we were given the acronym PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. And that told us a way to simplify an expression using parentheses, going into the parentheses, simplifying exponents then, multiplication and division always before sub addition and subtraction. And when we're solving an equation, we tend to work backwards because the goal of any equation is to isolate the variable. And if we look at this first example, I need to isolate x. My goal is to solve for x. Find the value of x that satisfies this equation. Some value that when I plug it in, multiply it by 3, and then add 4, that value that I plug in, and after doing those operations, I need to get 19. So again, we're going to work backwards. We're going to use the order of operations and our properties of equality here to work backwards. So I'm going to do, I'm going to eliminate any addition and subtraction. And even before I do that, I want to look at both sides of the equation and see if everything is simplified. And if it isn't simplified, I want to do that first. But it looks like it is. There's nothing over here I can combine. The 3x and the 4 are not like terms, and there's nothing to do with 19. So now I want to first eliminate the addition and subtraction. I need to eliminate this plus 4. And to do that, I can eliminate that by subtracting a value of 4. Because I know the opposite of adding 4 would be taking away 4. So I can take away 4 from the left, but the property of equality tells me I must do the same thing. If I want this equation to hold, I need to subtract 4 from the right-hand side. And when I do that, I'm left with 3x, the plus 4 minus 4, that cancels out to be plus 0, which is just nothing. And on the right-hand side, 19 minus 4 is 15. I now see that I just have 3 times some number equals 15. I need to somehow eliminate or remove this multiplication times 3. And I can do that by dividing. I can divide both sides by 3. And when I do that, the 3 divided by 3 cancels out to be 1. So I have 1x equal to, and if I divide 15 by 3, I get 5. And we know 1x is just x. So I get a solution of x equal to 5. We can always check to see if this is correct by taking 5 and plugging it back in. So if I plug 5 back into the equation, I better get an equation here, an equality that holds. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 4. Is that equal to 19? It is. So this is just a quick check. I found the solution. Looking at the next example, we have a little bit of a different look here. We have 3x plus 2 minus 5, 3 times the quantity x plus 2 minus 5. And on the right-hand side, we have x's, 2x's plus 7. And what I need to do before I do anything is make sure everything's simplified. And it looks like before I start moving and subtracting quantities from both sides, I need to perhaps multiply this out. And I'm going to use the distributive property. So I know if I'm taking 3 times some quantity, I can distribute that 3 to both of the quantities inside. The distributive property of multiplication over addition. This is 3 times x, so this will be 3x. 3 times 2 is 6, and I'll have a minus 5 equals 2x plus 7. So all I did there was just multiply this quantity to its equivalent form of 3x plus 6. And again, before I start adding and subtracting things from both sides, I notice that I still have this 6 plus 6 minus 5. I could actually combine those. I know 6 minus 5 is just 1. So the total here on the left-hand side is going to be 3x plus 1. And on the right-hand side, I get 2x plus 7. Now, uh, we have variables here on both sides. And I, the goal will be to eliminate, be to eliminate the variables on one side. Let's think about what this actually means. If I have three x's, I could write that as x plus x plus x. And then I have this plus 1. And on the right-hand side, I have two x's and seven ones.
if my goal is to eliminate variables on one side, and, and that is the goal, I want to eliminate variables on one side, I need to isolate a variable, so I need to get them or eliminate them from one side. Now, I know in that previous video that we saw, we can think of this as a scale and remove values from both sides. So if I wanted to, let's say, remove these two x's on the right-hand side, to keep this scale balanced, I need to cancel out two x's on the left. And I want to isolate this single x by itself, so I need to cancel out or cross out this plus 1, which means I'm going to need to do the same thing on the other side. Now what do we have left? We have 1x on the left-hand side, and if I count all these 1s, I'm going to have 6 of them. Now, what does that look like? And, and this is, that's just a very, um, it's a different way to look at this problem. But if we just had 3x plus 1, what did we do there when we eliminated those x's? I actually subtracted 2x's from this side. So some people use the phrase bringing them over to the same side, but really what I'm doing is just eliminating the x's on one side. And then when I subtracted the 1, I... And again, just focusing on isolating this variable, and I get the same thing. So this problem was a little different because we needed to first simplify both sides, and then we needed to isolate the variable because we had variables on both sides. For this final problem, we're dealing with fractions. We have 3 sevenths m, we need to isolate that m, minus 1 half equal to 2 thirds. This problem is really no different than the others. If we look back to the first equation where we had 3x plus 4 equal to 19, this problem has a similar structure. We could just add 1 half and then divide by 3 sevenths. And that's really going to be a, a good way to do this problem if you're comfortable with fractions. If you're not comfortable with fractions, what we can do is actually use what's called the least common multiple. It's the least common multiple. And what that allows us to do, if we can find the least common multiple of the denominators, which is also the least common denominator, we need to find a number that is divisible by 7, 2, and 3. And I'm getting those values from the denominators. I need to find a number that I can divide by 7 evenly, divide by 2 evenly, and 3. And if you're not too sure, this one isn't totally obvious, but if you're never sure or you're unsure what to do, just multiply those. So 7 times 2 times 3 it gives us 42. So what I'm going to do is actually multiply both sides of my equation by 42. And what that's going to do is eliminate all of the fractions. So why did I choose 42? Because 42 is the least common denominator when we consider the denominators of 7, 2, and 3. 42, we can take 42 and divide it by 7 and get an even number. We can take 42, divide it by 2, and get a whole number, excuse me. And we can take 42, and, and it's also divisible by 3. So it's divisible by all of these quantities. So if I distribute 42 to everything, I get 42 times 3 sevenths times m, minus 42 times 1 half, and that's going to be equal to 2 thirds times 42. Now if you have a calculator, you could just do those operations, multiply those values in the calculator, but multiplying with fractions really isn't too challenging. 42, if we break that into 7 pieces, so 42 divided by 7 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. So this is going to be 18m. And if you want to double check with your calculator, you're welcome to. The next problem here, I have 42. I'm going to divide by 2. That gives me 21. And multiply by 1. That's 21. And then finally, I have 42. I'll divide by 3. That's 14. 14 times 2 is 28. And again, you can put those in the calculator if you want to confirm. And now we are left with an equation, an equation that is similar to what we saw earlier. And what is nice is we're not dealing with fractions now. And I just used the least common multiple of the denominators, the least common denominator, to cancel all of the 
the rational numbers, the fractions. So now what I'm going to do is add 21 to both sides and approach this very much like I would any other problem. So I'll have 18m equal to 49, and now I can divide by 18. And I'm going to get m equal to, you can leave that, if we want to leave that just as 49 eighteenths, that's fine. If you're not told what to do, you can leave it as uh, a fraction. You're also welcome to put that in your calculator and get an approximate value, maybe around to the tenths or hundredths, whatever is appropriate for the situation. Like I said, we can always check our work. So if you plug this value back into here, you better get a value that satisfies this equation.